So let's continue. Uh, the first uh, lecture would be on thyroid pathology. So the thyroid gland, you have the right and left lobes, and then the isthmus. And sometimes, particularly when it's enlarged, you may have this pyramidal lobe, uh, as you can see over here. And then if you look at the thyroid gland, it's not uncommon to see some sort of nodules uh, there. And particularly if patients are being undergoing ultrasound examination, they have known disease, they may pick up more of these subclinical nodules in those instances. Now, the thyroid uh, uh, gland arises from the foramen uh, cecum. Uh, it's at the junction of the anterior two-thirds and the posterior one-third of the uh, tongue. Uh, and then as a bilobe structure that grows downwards in the midline of the neck. And it's usually attached by a stalk and that regresses afterwards. The ultimobranchial body uh, gives rise to the cells that come in to give rise uh, to those calcitonin-producing um, cells. And so it arises from the foramen cecum and it descends to its normal adult position. Sometimes the descent may um, become uh, may become arrested, so you may just have a lingual thyroid, or maybe anywhere along that. Sometimes it can overshoot and go lower down. During its descent, it's attached by a stalk that should regress, but if any part of that stalk persists, it can become cystically dilated, enlarged to give rise to a cyst that can get infected. Here's a patient with a tongue sticking out, so that's a lingual thyroid there, all right? So lingual thyroid. Here's a young child with a midline cystic neck mass, and um, here's the stalk for that. So this is a thyroglossal duct cyst, and it may become secondarily infected. You may or may not see thyroid tissue around it, and the lining can either be squamous or ciliated respiratory type epithelium or a combination of that. And if it's become infected, you may not really see much of a lining. So this is a thyroglossal duct um, cyst uh, as seen here. Uh, many times adjacent to the thyroid, particularly when they're doing surgery, they'll send you something, say, is this a lymph node, etc. You can see parathyroid tissue, sometimes thymus-like, ectopic thymus-like tissue. Sometimes it's actually lymph nodes, uh, et cetera. So it's not uncommon to see these. Now, the thyroid gland, you ha have the uh, follicular cells that give rise to the um, thyroid hormones. The parafollicular or the C cells, the calcitonin producing cells, uh, are present in, in between and under normal circumstances on H&E, they're not that obvious. And sometimes if you're not sure, are you in the thyroid or not, if you look inside, you should see some sort of calcium oxalate crystals, particularly on smears um, uh, under examination. These uh, uh, C cells, uh, calcitonin producing cells, may be highlighted by, um, you know, dense core security grounds by EM, or you can do the calcitonin stains for that. So normally the follicles are pinpoint to uh, you know a couple of millimeters, but and there's sort of variation. So in patients with normal thyroid function, hyperplastic um, conditions, hyperfunction, this uh, lining cells are tall, columnar, and the colloid is actively being reabsorbed to be you know discharged into the bloodstream, the hormones. So you have this peripheral scalloping or moth-eaten appearance. And then in a hypofunctioning states, you have these inactive lining cells with abundant colloid in the center. And a goiter just means enlargement of a thyroid gland. It can be, you know, due to tumors and or uh, other conditions. Multinodular goiters, they're usually a simple goiter, but in time, chronicity, the secondary changes, there may be um, sort of cystic uh, change, fibrosis, and it becomes nodular. And, you know, obviously mechanically, I mean, cosmetic reasons, it doesn't look nice. And then, you know, uh, Particularly if there's a retrosternal um, goiter, then there's problems in eating and even breathing sometimes. So you all know what a multinodular goiter looks like. So anytime you have multiple nodules, usually relax thinking, oh, it's probably a multinodular uh, goiter. 
And um, it's uh, characteristic you have these large macro follicles in a variable uh, appearance in different sites. And if you were to do an FNA, you would see lots and lots of this free watery colloid as is seen over here, and very few of the lining follicular cells. So a few lining follicular cells, maybe some sidrophages, but lots of free colloid. Here's a patient with hyperfunctioning thyroid, uh, you know, uh, and you have these active looking cells and the scalloping that you see peripherally. So this patient has hyperfunctioning thyroid there. This is an EM showing how uh, the thyroid hormones are produced and stored in the f uh, form of colloid in the center, and then they're uh, reabsorbed back into the cytoplasm to be discharged into the bloodstream. Again, hyperfunctioning. Um, um, thyroid there. Now Graves disease is one of those autoimmune diseases due to a defect in the T cells and um, the classic uh, one would be a diffuse goiter, signs of hyperthyroidism and uh, you know in the advanced cases exophthalmus or pre-tibial um, dermopathy as seen over here. And it's an autoimmune uh, disease, there's a, a defect in the helper T cells, and uh, there's these auto um, antibodies. And um, as it is, the thyroid gland is very vascular. When it's hyperfunctioning, it becomes even more vascular. So, uh, you know, the thyroid is going to appear much uh, more red because of that. And um, so, Patients with Graves disease is usually treated medically. For some reason, if the patient uh, is stopped responding to treatment or they just want to have the thyroid taken out, they don't want to keep taking the medications, then you may see the, uh, the uh, specimen uh, in your lab. So this is a hyperfunctioning thyroid, but you know, you can't do surgery and when the patient has such hyperfunction because just by manipulating, you'll be discharging more uh, hormones into the bloodstream. So they're usually given something, high dose of iodine or something to just decrease the vascularity uh, and uh, uh, function for a while. The only clue would be this little buckling that may be a clue that this was a hyperthyroid patient. Some patients with Graves' disease, some famous people, um, Barbara Bush, the senior um, President Bush, uh, both had Graves' disease, and it you know these run in families, but they are related by marriage. Uh, and then um, the the first dog also had an autoimmune disease. This is just to emphasize that the patients may have not just one autoimmune uh, endocrine disease, but other body sites and or rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, etc. Other autoimmune Autoimmune diseases may be present as well. Uh, be careful, do not eat the neck parts of animals because if it contains a thyroid gland, then everybody gets hyperthyroidism if they you know, uh, eat that. They, uh, some years ago, many years ago, I think, they had uh, some hamburgers were uh, supplied by this uh, meat processing plant and they were putting the animal's neck in that and people were just had signs of hyperthyroidism. So now by law, they're not supposed to put the neck parts in burgers. Now what about, uh, what can you tell me about the patient's uh, thyroid status by looking at this? What's your diagnosis in this? Hashimoto, so it's hypofunctioning, right? So it's another autoimmune disease. This is also a T cell um, defect. So lymphocytes, plasma cells, and the thyroid follicular cells undergo this metaplasia, this eosinophilic metaplasia. And um, I know they say it's uh, herthal cells. He was describing something in dogs that were the calcitonin producing cells, but everybody calls them herthal cells nowadays. So, but this is sort of herthal cell or oncocytic metaplasia that you see over here. And you can see the lymphocytes and are even attacking the cells. So in time, these follicles become destroyed by this autoimmune, both cell-mediated as well as humoral autoimmunity. In cytology, what are the clues? Oncocytic um, thyroid follicular cell, look at the lymphocytes in the background and sometimes even in the cytoplasm, and you might see plasma cells as well. 
So Hashimoto uh, thyroiditis, uh, another T cell defect, increased incidence in patients with Turner's Down um, syndrome. It's, there's so much lymphoid infiltrate that is very firm, rubbery, and appears a little more whitish in appearance because of that. So look at this. Um, you have so much uh, 